Chris Doring is with us now, the former Florida great now with the SEC Network. He was at Alabama's Pro Day yesterday. Chris, what is up, man? How are you? Good, I was about to say good morning, but uh, good afternoon. It's good to be back with you guys. And I was in Alabama, man, for a guy that was as critical of the tide as I was early in the season last year and as unfriendly as the fan base was to me for the majority of the season I, I felt like we wiped the slate clean and, and we're on a on a fresh start going forward it was great being there and nobody does it quite as well as what Alabama does with their attention to detail and hospitality you uh you uh, we were just joking that some of the NFL scouts were probably watching Bryce Young you caught a ball from him I'll ask you the difficult question who threw a better fade Danny Warfel or Bryce Young oh you put me in a, a tough spot right here. <laughs> Danny Warfel will be arriving at my house in the next like five or six hours. So yeah. I don't want to speak disparagingly about my house guest or the guy that uh, I caught the majority of my touchdowns from. But I'll say this, man, it, it was a lot of fun. And, and catching the ball from him was cool. But that was my first time interacting with him and just seeing his smile, feeling the authenticity. His father introduced himself to me. I could see where Bryce gets it from, man. I just, I can't say enough about what I saw from him in my personal interaction. I've seen a lot of him on tape and watch games and everything else, which I'm amazed by, but just the, the guy that he seems to be, man, I can't say enough about how authentic he, he seems to, to feel to me. And, and he spent a lot of times talking to the media as this camp has started about um, the process of starting, uh, starting new, that it, you, it's not a carryover from last season. You start every year new and there's a, there's building blocks into a season. Um, do you do you sense that 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 is something that he really is going through that he he has that maturity already and 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 did you find that to be true yourself back in your playing days that really it's not a carryover from a season you start every season from a starting point and build up to a season yeah every season is a new in and of itself and and so it was always interesting to me where you start to get a feeling for who your team is going to be is not necessarily in fall practice. It's not in, you know, the spring practices. It's in the offseason workouts and the conditioning and the, the 615 workouts. And, and, you know, who are the leaders? Who are the guys that are stepping up? How hungry do these guys seem? And I would have to imagine this has got to be one of the, the hungrier teams. I mean, I think Nick Saban has had to deal with teams in the past where they've won a championship, they've gone undefeated, and and you, you can see where you might feel entitled as a human being after going through that kind of success. But this team lost a regular season game to Texas A&M. They lost in the championship game to Georgia. Like, I have to imagine there's some unfinished business. And as you look at it, man, I can't say enough about how excited I am about the defense with all they return, that production on that side of the ball. And then when have we ever gotten to see the two best players in all of college football, the best quarterback, and the best edge rusher back for another season together on the same team. I mean, I don't know that I can think of a dynamic like that in the history of, of me playing and, and covering this league, at least. Chris Doring is with us. You see him on the SEC Network, hear him on Sirius XM Radio, at Chris Doring on Twitter is where you can follow him. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Nobody was going to shed tears for Alabama last year that this might not have been the most talented roster Nick Saban had ever taken to a national championship game. But the truth remains, it may may have been. And that kind of showed, uh, I would imagine yesterday in the pro day, this is not Alabama's typical draft class under Nick Saban. Not at all. And I asked him about that in our interview yesterday. You know, there's certainly some top-tier talent. Evan Neal will hear his name called in the top five or ten picks. Uh, But you look at it, typically we're seeing – you know, three, four guys come off in the first round, and that will not be the case in, in late April's draft. Um, I think you can look at it one of two ways, right? I mean, at Florida, I covered Florida's pro day on Monday. It, I think that was more of a reflection of, of the, the dearth of talent that, that Billy Napier is trying to deal with right now. The, the lack of really elite SEC caliber talent that was on that roster is reflected by four guys getting invited to the combine. You know, maybe having a handful of, of scouts and, and, and coaches there in attendance on, on Monday versus what you saw, you know, on, on, on Wednesday's pro day in Tuscaloosa. Uh, still a lot of excitement around um, some of the top talent that there are two head coaches in, in town, some some uh, coaches from every team representing all 32 squads in the NFL. But um, I just I think the the pure lack of depth of that talent was what was interesting to me. And what a blessing it is if you're Nick Saban to have all that guy, all that talent coming back next year. And I asked him about, you know, kind of how it felt for him. He said, look, we we got nine starters returning on defense. We got five returning on offense. So you do have to to fill some holes, particularly at the receiver spot. When you lose your top three receivers 
uh, to the NFL draft. But golly, I, I, I'd take that defense uh, any day of the year. And what a luxury we've had in this conference over the last couple of years. We saw a generational offense with LSU in 2019, another generational offense the next year in 2020 with Alabama. And then I would say in that same category, a generational defense with the exception of the SEC title game from Georgia. I think this Georgia, Alabama defense has a chance to be a very similar kind of uh, equal to what we saw from, from Georgia's defense last year. We were blessed that two of our three athletes that we had NIL deals with to appear on our show last football season were John Mechie and Slade Bolden. Um, you have one guy who's injured and has high draft stock. And then you have the other guy who surprised us a little bit that he left in Slade Bolden. Talk about both those guys, one in Mechie and Jamison Williams, who are having to deal with injuries. You've seen yeah. you've seen p- players at your position have to do that. And then Slade Bolden, who maybe is trying to change the perception of, of how maybe NFL teams see him. Talk about both of those dynamics at that position. Yeah, an interesting kind of contrast yesterday, as you see two guys in Mechie and Williams recovering from injuries, not really participating in anything other than getting measured. And then you see a guy like Slade Bolden, who's out there fighting for his life, doing every single thing there is to do (laughs) to show the NFL scouts he's worthy. Maybe one of the most comical moments of the entire day, and I don't think they saw this on television, but uh, when they were doing the vertical leap, uh, Slade gets up there, and and always it's, it's, it's like the most inexact measurement you can ever have right all right stretch your arm out let's get the thing set and then we'll you know we'll, we'll measure how high you can jump well the trick has always been uh for us especially receivers always want to try to get away with some keep your knees bent a little bit don't reach as much don't extend your fingertips <laughs> so he does it he jumps they call him for moving his foot and then somebody from the peanut gallery requests a remeasure so they get him back up there and they're they're pulling his hand up they're stretching it it was like comedy <laughs> and finally they were able to get it done but he did increase his, his vertical leap i believe from 32 and a half at the combine to 36 he did everything there was only a couple alabama players that participated in, in all of the drills uh yesterday uh but slade was certainly one of them i thought he looked good catching the football had one drop but had one amazing catch that he was able to make and what a benefit it is for those that work out to have the ability to have your quarterback bryce young out there throwing to he and, and b rob yesterday when i was coming out you didn't have that. So you had to find a quarterback that could throw to you. And in my case, Danny Warfel was a year younger. So I, I didn't have the opportunity to have the guy that I was familiar with catching the football from out there for my pro day. But uh, I love that they changed that rule. And I love we've seen C.J. Stroud. We've seen Anthony Richardson here in Gainesville. We've now seen Bryce Young throwing. And that was kind of one big moment yesterday is when everybody saw him show up on the practice field. Everybody's head kind of turned and, and got excited. What a contrast it'll be this year, him throwing the ball versus next year when he presumably goes to the NFL and, and, and gets ready with the, the combine and, and that pro day there in Tuscaloosa next spring. Yeah, that's when they come back next year. Oh, I threw last year. Yeah, no, no, I threw <laughs> last year. Yeah, you guys, I'm not going to do that again. You should have taken, yeah. taken notes then. Uh, <laughs> well, he, people, people did take notes <laughs> yesterday. Oh, I know, yes, I know. Yes. Uh, he is Chris Doring at Chris Doring on Twitter, Chris Doring 28 on Instagram. Chris, thank you for the time, man. Always great talking with you. Yeah, always fun being with you guys. Thanks for having me. I look forward to catching up soon. You bet, man. Take care. Have a good Take weekend. Care. You and Warfel have fun playing golf, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is Chris Doring on the Johnston RVcenter.com hotline.